January 30th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Mark Chapter 2 from the New Testament Now after some days, when he returned to Capernaum, the news spread that he was at home. So many gathered that there was no longer any room, not even by the door, and he preached the word to them. Some people came bringing to them a paralytic, carried by four of them. When they were not able to bring him in because of the crowd, they removed the roof above Jesus. Then, after tearing it out, they lowered the stretcher the paralytic was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the experts in the law were sitting there, turning these things over in their minds. Why does this man speak this way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now immediately when Jesus realized in his spirit that they were contemplating such thoughts, he said to them, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up, take your stretcher and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, stand up, take your stretcher and go home. And immediately the man stood up, took his stretcher, and went out in front of them all. They were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again by the sea. The whole crowd came to him, and he taught them. As he went along, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. Follow me, he said to him, and he got up and followed him. As Jesus was having a meal in Levi's home, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the experts in the law and the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are healthy don't need a physician, but those who are sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. So they came to Jesus and said, Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples don't fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they do not fast. But the days are coming when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and at that time they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, otherwise the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and the tear becomes worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins will be destroyed. Instead, new wine is poured into new wineskins. Jesus was going through the grain fields on a Sabbath, and his disciples began to pick some heads of wheat as they made their way. So the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing what is against the law on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions were hungry? How he entered the house of God? when Abiathar was high priest and ate the sacred bread, which is against the law for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for people, not people for the Sabbath. For this reason, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. God, I think in this story, it's interesting listening to the experts in the law. And please realize I'm not defending them because I know that they were simply trying to be a pain to your son while he was here on earth. But a lot of this had to be very confusing to them. They had been raised ever since they were children, in the law, in the Jewish law at the time, the law of Moses. And that's all they knew and that's all they believed. Yet within their teaching, they had been told about this coming Christ. 
and he was here, but they were having such a hard time reconciling that he was here right in front of them with this law that had been drilled into their heads. You must do this. You cannot do this. This has to be this way. Speaking of forgiveness, all they knew was that you had to go to a priest and that priest had to intercede on your behalf with a, a shedding of blood through an animal sacrifice to have your sins forgiven with God. That's, that's all they knew. And here's this person right in front of them who's telling this person, son, your, your sins are forgiven. And so even, even though they were being frustrating on purpose, it also must have been, it also must have been kind of frustrating for them to try and figure out what that looked like and who you really were. Now the, the next part, obviously Jesus, your son shows them. Fine, I'll show you the physical example of my power and authority here on earth. I'll allow this paralytic to get up and walk. But you have to understand if you are going to acknowledge my authority to do things like this, and you have to acknowledge my authority that I am Jesus Christ, son of your God, that you are doing all of these rules and regulations for, supposedly. If you're going to believe in the seen, then you also have to believe in the unseen. And I think I can say, I know for me, I struggle with you, with that God. The things I see, I, I watch you work in people's life and it's absolutely amazing. And I love, I always talk about it as a front row seat. I love when you give me a front row seat to see you work in people's lives. But where I lose my footing, not because I'm trying to be a pain, but where I just truly lose my footing and my faith and my, my grasp on the direction I'm supposed to go, is when I lose sight of you in that process. When I physically can't see you working in my life, I in my humanness honestly think that you've stopped working in my life, that I'm winging it, that I'm out here on my own. So God, today I pray for everyone who's listening, that they, like myself, can know that you are always there, that we can always depend on you, that we can always feel your love and understanding and grace and forgiveness and mercy, that even when we aren't in those times where you're allowing us to watch your amazing work, either in ourselves or other people, that during those times, that faith would carry us through, that we could still hold on to those memories, that we could be in your word learning, that we could be praying to you, that we wouldn't lose that, that touch point that we have with you, God. That we wouldn't be like these so-called experts in the law of saying this has to be this in order for this to happen. I have to see God working in order to continue to believe in him in order to have this wishy-washy faith of mine. God, today I ask for strong, clear, acknowledged faith in you, faith in all you can do, faith in what you can do for, for your people, faith in what your people can do for you. I ask for just an amazing day for everyone listening, God, that they will just go forward, be excited about today, and know even if they can't intentionally watch you work, that you are constantly working all things good for those who love you. God, thank you so much for everything you give us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.